The Russian propaganda machine has been working for years to create a cult of victory. The main aim was to create a nation that would support the aggressive policies of the leadership. A nation for whom war is not a sorrow to be avoided at all costs, but something heroic. For this purpose, they took the 9th of May as a sacred date and built a system of myths around it. Context. The Cult of Victory. The Great Deception begins with the distortion of history. According to Russian chronicles, the Second World War took place on dates other than those generally accepted. As we all know, the Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939 with Nazi Germany's attack on Poland. But in the Russian chronicles, the beginning of the war with Hitler was the 22nd of June 1941. Скажите, когда началась Вторая мировая война? Вторая? 23 июня. 22 Вторая мировая? Или Великая Отечественная? Великая Отечественная. А Вторая мировая? Она же. Она же и есть. войны. Можете назвать годы начала и завершения? Это Великая Отечественная. There is a reason for the mass amnesia. After all, during those two years, which were literally erased from the Russians' collective memory, the USSR sided with Germany and helped Hitler start the bloodiest war in world history. On the 1st of September 1939, Germany invaded Poland. On the 17th of September 1939, Soviet troops invaded Poland as an ally of Germany. There are even photographs of the military of the two armies fraternizing. Therefore, in the official history of the USSR, and later Russia, its participation in the Second World War began much later, with the attack on the USSR by ex-allied Nazi Germany on the 22nd of June 1941. Only then did the USSR really begin to fight Nazi Germany. Along with the dates of this war, the Soviet authorities also changed its common name. The conventional English translation of the Russian version of World War II is the Great Patriotic War. But it is an inaccurate translation, because the key word in the Russian version is fatherland, literally. Their version of the name translates as the Great War for the Fatherland. After this renaming, all nations that used to be part of the USSR automatically lose their nationality and become part of the fatherland, which is supposed to be common for them. If there is a common homeland, then there is one common people, the great Soviet people, the liberator nation, as they called themselves. This brings us to the second point of the creation of the cult of victory, the total glorification of the deeds of the ancestors and the erasure of the merits of other nations. For decades, Russia's ruling elite has repeated the narrative that it was the Russian nation who won the victory of an autism. Thus, the participation of Ukrainians, Belarusians, Poles, Georgians is simply not mentioned, while the contribution of other European countries and the USA, which suffered from Nazism and fought bravely against it, is completely erased from the Soviet and now Russian mythology. Наш народ был один, один на многотрудном, героическом и жертвенном пути к победе. And the final ingredient in the creation of the cult of victory is a big holiday as an excuse for regular weaponry in front of the opponents. Take the 2008 parade, for example. Modern equipment moved across Red Square. For the first time in 18 years, military equipment appeared on the pavement, giving a full idea of the power of our army. After showing off in Red Square, the Russian Federation invaded Georgia that same year and started a war there. It was the first attack on a former Soviet Republic that had gained independence. So why does Russia need the myth of the Great War for the Fatherland? The cult of victory is like a drug for the people who want more and more doses of self-affirmation. The victorious war in Georgia, the occupation of the Crimea, the war in the Donbass, and finally the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The audience is excited and wants more.
They start with the myth that the USSR, now Russia, was all alone in the great war against the Nazis, and that nobody helped it. Then they add the fact that the Nazis came from the West. Now they have everything they need to convince the audience that Russia's modern enemies still come from the West, and they are using the myth to justify aggression against Ukraine now. Putin's direct speech Russia дала упреждающий отпор агрессии. Это было вынужденное, своевременное и единственно правильное решение. Обращаюсь сейчас к нашим вооруженным силам и к ополченцам Донбасса. Вы сражаетесь за родину, за ее будущее, за то, чтобы никто не забыл уроков Второй мировой. There are no Nazis in Ukraine. However, the power of propaganda and the cult of victory proved to be stronger than common sense. Thank you.